Within an hour of news of her passing, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said President Trump's nominee to replace Justice Ginsburg will receive a vote in the Senate within an hour of her passing. The exact opposite of what he said when President Obama nominated Merrick Garland to replace Justice Scalia in 2016. At that time, Majority Leader McConnell made up a rule based on the fiction that I somehow believe there should be no nomination to the court in election year. It's ridiculous. The only rule I've ever followed relating to the Supreme Court nomination was the Constitution's obligation for senators to provide their advice and their consent to a president's judicial nominee. But he created a new rule, the McConnell rule. Absolutely no hearing, no vote for a nominee in an election year, period, no caveats. And many Republican senators agreed with him, including then-Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Chuck Grassley of Iowa, including the current Chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, who at the time said, and I'll quote verbatim, here's what he said, quote, I want you to use my words against me if there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, whoever it might be, make the nomination. Continue the quote. And you could use my words against me, and you'd be absolutely right. End of quote. That's what Republican said when Justice Scalia passed away about nine months before Election Day that year. Now, having lost Justice Ginsburg less than seven weeks before election this year, after Americans have already begun to cast their vote, it's estimated that up to 40 percent of Americans will have voted by October 1st, but at least 30 percent, tens of millions. And you can't unring the bell. Having made this their standard when it served their interests, they cannot, just four years later, change course when it doesn't serve their ends. Look, I'm not being naive. I'm not speaking that President Trump will do whatever he wants. I'm not speaking that Mitch McConnell will do what he wants, and he does. I'm speaking to those Republicans out there Senate Republicans, who know deep down what is right for the country and consistent with the Constitution, as I stay here in the, stand here in the Constitution Center, not just what's best for their party. I'm speaking for millions of Americans out there who already have voted and continue to vote, and will have many more have voted by the time this process is finished. Millions of Americans were voting because they know their health care hangs in the balance. In the middle of the worst global health crisis in living memory, Donald Trump is before the Supreme Court trying to strip health care coverage away from tens of millions of families and to strip away the peace of mind of more than 100 million Americans with pre existing conditions. If he succeeds, insurers could once again discriminate or drop coverage completely for people living with pre-existing conditions like asthma, diabetes, cancer, and so many other problems. And perhaps, most cruelly of all, if Donald Trump has his way, the complications from COVID-19, which are well beyond what they should be, it's estimated that 200 million people have died, probably by the time I finish this talk. The complications of COVID-19, like lung scarring and heart damage, could become the next deniable pre-existing condition for over 6 million Americans 
who have already contracted the disease. Millions of Americans are also voting because they don't want nearly half a century of legal precedent to be overturned and lose the right to choose. Millions of Americans who are at risk of losing their right to vote. Millions of dreamers who are at risk of being expelled from the only country they have ever known. Millions of workers, union workers, who are at risk of losing their right to collectively bargain. Millions of Americans who are demanding that their voices be heard, that equal justice be a guarantee for all, not just some. They know, we all know, what should happen now. The voters of this country should be heard. As I said, voting has already begun. By the time we get to the middle of October, there will be millions and millions and millions have already voted. In just a few weeks, all votes of this nation will be heard. They're the ones who the Constitution vision should decide who has the power to make this appointment. This appointment isn't about the past. It's about the future. And the people of this nation, and the people of this nation are choosing their future right now as they vote. To jam this nomination through the Senate is just an exercise in raw political power. And I don't believe the people of this nation will stand for it. President Trump has already made it's clear, this is about power, pure and simple power. Whether the voters should make it clear on this issue, as so many others, the power in this nation resides with them, the American people, the voters. And even if Trump, even if President Trump wants to put forward a name now, the Senate should not act until after the American people select their next president, their next Congress, their next Senate. If Donald Trump wins the election, then the Senate should move on his selection and weigh the nominee he chooses fairly. But if I win this election, President Trump's nominee should be withdrawn. And as a new president, I should be the one who nominates Justice Ginsburg's successor, a nominee who should get a fair hearing in the Senate before a confirmation hearing, uh, before a confirmation vote, I should say, after a confirmation hearing. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Like I said, as I speak, we're probably passing 200,000 deaths lost to this virus. Tens of millions of Americans are unemployed. Health care in this country hangs in the balance before the court. And now, in a raw political move, this president and the Republican leader have decided to jam a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court through the United States Senate. That's the last thing we need at this moment. As I said, voters have already begun casting their votes in the millions. And in just a few weeks, we're going to know who the voters of this nation have chosen as the next president. The United States Constitution was designed to give voters one chance, one chance to have their voice heard and who serves on the court. And by the way, there's no court session between now and the end of this election. That moment is now for the voters to get a chance to be heard, and their voice should be heard. And I believe voters are going to make it clear they'll not stand for this abuse of power, this constitutional abuse. There's no discussion about what happens if the Senate confirms on the eve of election or in a lame duck after Donald Trump loses. A successor to Justice Ginsburg, what happens? But that discussion assumes that we lose this effort to prevent the grave wrong that Trump and McConnell are pursuing here. I'm not going to assume failure at this point.